Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And on this particular video, we're going to take a look at this question right here. Is Algebra 2 hard, right? I mean, we're talking about Algebra, but not Algebra 1. We got this little 2 behind it here. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean it's like super advanced? Maybe it's doubly uh, difficult than Algebra 1. How difficult is Algebra 2, right? Is it like super, super hard? Well, I'm going to answer this question here. Uh, in this particular video, and the obvious answer uh, is going to, you know, it's going to depend on your current math skills, right? So if you're weak in Algebra 1, yeah, obviously Algebra 2 is going to be difficult. But I'm going to tell you right now that all of you, okay, irrespective of where you're starting at, can be successful in Algebra 2, right? So if you are really concerned about taking Algebra 2 or kind of terrified of it, I need you to relax because I want to try to give you a nice plan of action so you can pass this course, right? And uh, kind of the uh, way I'm going to do that is to compare it to Algebra 1. So we'll kind of talk about the differences between Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 and obviously give you, um, you know, some food for thought on how to get ready uh, to be successful in Algebra 2. Now, if you are currently taking Algebra 2 or have already taken Algebra 2, what do you think? Was Algebra 2 difficult? Was it hard? Put your um, uh, feedback into the comment sections. And of course, I'm going to share with you what I think. You know, of course, I've taught Algebra 2 for decades. I taught all these courses. And, um, you know, so, I mean, obviously for me, I took this class way back, maybe 19. 85 or something like that, whatever it was, I didn't do too well in it because I wasn't a serious math student. Anyways, we'll talk about all that here in just one second. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And being that we're talking about Algebra 2, I'm going to leave uh, the direct link to my Algebra 2 uh, course in the description below as well. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Is Algebra 2 hard? How hard is it? Well, the first thing I want to do is just kind of um, uh, take a look at a typical high school uh, level uh, math track. Okay, now uh, for most students, uh, this is their typical path through high school mathematics. So you're coming into high school you know, let's just actually kind of uh, identify this is middle school right here, right? So in middle school, uh, what classes do you take in middle school? Well, you'll take sixth grade math, seventh grade math, and then typically in your eighth grade, all right, you're taking what we call pre-algebra, okay? So most, most eighth graders are taking pre-algebra. Now, some seventh graders could take pre-algebra, Okay, so the seventh grade, if you took pre-algebra at the eighth grade, you'd be starting algebra one. Right. So this is not all uh, uncommon as well. And this is kind of like those students on the more advanced track. So, uh, you know, here instead of algebra one in their ninth grade year, they would be where? Well, they would just, you know, there would be a geometry, then algebra two. Then here there would be a pre-calculus and that opens them up for calculus as a senior. So if you ever ask yourself, how do you get to, you know, take those AP calculus courses? Well, you know, that's a typical way of doing it. You can also take summer school to try to kind of maybe complete um, geometry uh, in your summer after your uh, freshman year. So you can go into algebra two in your sophomore year to kind of accelerate the track. But anyways, now, for the most students, right, they're taking pre-algebra in the eighth grade uh, uh, level in middle school. And then in high school, you start off with algebra one. OK, so this is your first uh, full year of algebra. And it's a big jump up from pre-algebra. OK, so it's a pretty challenging course. Uh, you know, I've taught this for years and it's an extremely important course. And again, challenging, right? There is a lot of algebra in algebra one. Now, once you leave algebra one, most students are going to go into geometry, which you need some geom you need algebra to be successful in geometry. You're not going to use everything that you learned in algebra one in geometry, but you're going to uh, use a lot of algebra in geometry. And then after your 10th grade year, typically for most students are going to be taking algebra 2 and there's all kinds of variations you can have uh, honors algebra 2 algebra 2 with trigonometry 
there's even other courses, um, other course names. But basically, it's your second year of algebra, right? Then after you complete that, typically most students will go into a pre-calculus uh, course or a statistics course or you know business math or some other type of math right so only those students that really are you know looking to go to college are going to sign up for pre-calculus because this is a very difficult course and then obviously after that if you're in college you can go into like calculus okay so this is just the kind of typical um, breakdown of when you would take algebra 2 all right now one of the things I want you to think about when it comes to um, algebra in general is think of algebra as one big class right one big subject you might be saying what are you talking about mr. YouTube math man well I'm gonna tell you right now so here is one big gigantic algebra uh, you know course of study and it's, you know you want to break it up like in terms of pre-algebra algebra one algebra two even like pre-calculus it's just one big uh, study of algebra you know you start off with basic algebra and you go into more uh, advanced algebra okay this is algebra two right there actually and um, a lot of the concepts overlap right so in other words let me kind of do it like a little venn diagram here so here is pre-algebra Everything you learn in pre-algebra, a good chunk of it is going to be taught again in Algebra 1. So you're going to say, oh, I already saw that in pre-algebra. Well, you can kind of practice it again, review it, and then you learn new stuff. And then in Algebra 2, you're learning, you're kind of reviewing almost a good chunk of what's in Algebra 1, and then you learn new stuff. Okay, so it's one big continuum. And that's why math is so, uh, you know, interconnected. You cannot learn math in a vacuum in other words it can't be like oh i got this uh one chapter test i got to take this chapter test and once i learn this and i get my you know my a plus on this exam i'm going to totally forget that and then move on to the next test and then move on to the next test and the next test no it doesn't work that way to be successful on this test you're going to have to remember all these other things previous okay so when it comes to mathematics there is no real like shortcuts okay you're going to have to remember everything because it is a continuum all right, so now let's go ahead and just kind of compare and contrast. And I'm going to obviously be speaking to the question, uh, you know, how difficult is Algebra 2? Well, actually, let's just make a quick comment on this. If you had a tough time in Algebra 1, right? Yeah, obviously, uh, Algebra 2 is going to be basically Algebra 1 plus new stuff, okay? new things that you're going to learn so if you didn't like algebra one you're going to be basically doing algebra one again in algebra two just at a more advanced level okay all the stuff you saw in algebra one you're pretty much going to see it again and you're going to learn new things so if you struggle with algebra one algebra two is obviously going to be that much more difficult however okay if you aced algebra one that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to just kind of skate through and have no problems or not be challenged in algebra two because there is a pretty big step up in terms of uh you know learning more advanced math so let's go and talk about that right now okay so here's kind of just some um, uh, things that come to mind that distinguish algebra two from algebra one i'm not going to list out all the things you learn in algebra one now well, let's just list out a few basic things right uh, you learn how to solve linear equations uh, systems that's a big uh, deal um, you know quadratic equations you know how to deal with uh, how to graph and find the equation of uh, equations of lines that's a huge thing rational functions there's a lot in algebra one radical functions functions in general uh, polynomials uh, let's see here uh, working with powers and exponents I mean there I mean my algebra one course is I think it's like 15 chapters it's a, again a huge amount of material and all this stuff you're going to see in algebra 2 on top of some new things right so let's talk about uh, these new things now or uh, you know some of the things that distinguish algebra 2 from algebra 1 and and uh, of course this can vary depending on what textbook or you know school you're in whatever the case but in general this is uh, you know what distinguishes algebra 2 from algebra 1 now before I go any further here if you happen to be like a college student you're taking a course called college algebra okay college algebra 
uh, or intermediate algebra is very similar to high school level algebra two. Okay, it might have some little more trigonometry in it, but college algebra and algebra two are pretty close to being the same courses. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what distinguishes algebra two from algebra one. And the first thing I can think of is you're gonna be studying uh, polynomials at a higher level in algebra two. Okay, you're really gonna get into some things called like the fundamental theorem of algebra, uh, synthetic division, polynomial division, uh, remainder theorem, factor theorem. Uh, you really kind of get into some advanced stuff about polynomials and how to solve higher order polynomial equations. And for example, in algebra one, you might solve an equation like 2x plus x minus 3 is equal to 0. And you might even um, kind of somewhat be introduced to the complex number system and imaginary roots. So this is a typical quadratic equation. But what I'm talking about advanced polynomial equations is, you know, things like a fourth degree polynomial equation. How do you solve that? Well, this is a much more advanced problem. And, you know, this is typically not discussed. You know, 99% of the uh, Algebra 1 classes don't get into this. So this is a, a more advanced topic. But in order to be successful with this, you got to know all this other stuff from Algebra 1. Okay. And uh, this uh, chapter could actually be broken up into a couple chapters. So polynomials is a huge topic of Algebra, right? Especially Algebra 2. Right. And this is, again, um, you know, advanced. Matter of fact, it's so advanced that you're going to see it again in pre-calculus. OK, so let's talk about another one. And another one, um, another topic that comes to mind is logarithms. OK, how to solve or, you know, what is a logarithm? Uh, how do you solve exponential uh, equations, logarithmic equations? This is another new thing that, you know, students in Algebra 1 you know, will never see or have not seen before, right? Not never seen. So like log uh, base 3, you know, 5 equals x. What is that? What does this even mean? Well, again, this is uh, stuff that is typically uh, introduced at the Algebra 2 level, all right? Okay, so what about another... Uh, uh, and base, and let me just go back here and I'm kind of stumbling here. And these aren't, this is, this little list is not all inclusive. These are just some big um, things that come to mind that are going to be um, in most Algebra 2 classes and definitely not in Algebra 1 class. But what I wanted to say is that when it comes to advanced polynomials, this is going to be maybe like a, you know, one, one or two chapters worth of a new material. Logarithms, exponential functions, uh, definitely at least one new chapter. So, you know, when you're talking about a chapter uh, study, you're talking about a good couple weeks, you know, in a full chapter test. Uh, so these are not just little you know, micro topics. They're big topics within the course. So another one is matrices. Now, you might uh, certainly be introduced to matrices and working with uh, a matrix in Algebra 1, maybe a scalar multiplication, how to add matrices. But in uh, Algebra 2, you're going to get into some interesting uh, things like determinants of 2 by 2 matrices, 3 by 3 matrices, um, you know, inverse matrix, Kramer's rule. It's a big jump up, right? This is another at least full uh, chapter here. OK, so right here, you got a good four chapters and there's going to be even new and additional things. So even if you did well in Algebra 1, OK, you don't want to rest on uh, your laurels and be like, oh, you know, I'm good. I'll be fine in Algebra 2 because Algebra 1 is so easy. Listen, these uh, topics here are going to be, you know, uh, you know, a pretty decent step up in complexity, right, in terms of, uh, you know, more advanced math. Again, all these topics that I'm mentioning that you're going to see in Algebra 2, you're going to see them again in pre-calculus, right? And pre-calculus is definitely no joke. That is a challenging course. Okay, so let's just kind of um, sum this up. So how difficult uh, is Algebra 2? Well, yes, it's going to be, even for the best of students, in my experience, and I've been teaching a lot of, student, uh, a lot of students through many, many years, very strong students. I've taught Algebra 2 honors, all that kind of stuff. Everybody has to put in work to be successful in algebra. There's a lot of new information. So even the strong math students are going to have to work hard to kind of assimilate all this. Now, if you struggle in algebra, you can do really well uh, in algebra too. But here's the deal. If you have some time before you get into your algebra two course, you want to review algebra one as much as you possibly can. 
Now, if you didn't have much time and you're actually in Algebra 2 right now, what you want to do is work extra hard, right? Like in the very beginning of the course, and let me kind of uh, give you guys a tip out there. So here is uh, the way most courses are graded, right? So here we have our first quarter, our second quarter, our third quarter, and then our fourth quarter. And then right here we have what? We have a final exam. And then right here you can have like a midterm, right? Halfway through the course. Now, where do you think it's easier to get, well, let me just kind of back up here real quick. So your final grade, all right? We're talking about high school stuff here. Your grade is going to be super important, right? How do you get an A or a B plus or something like this in a course? Well, it's gonna be an average of, you know, how you did uh, for your quarter grades, right? Now, this is uh, how most high schools grade, and I'm just being very general here, right? So let's suppose here in your first quarter, you got an A, in your second quarter, you got a B, your third quarter, you got a C, and then your fourth quarter, you got a B. All this would be averaged out uh, to include your final exam, right? And your midterm to give you your final grade. Okay, so everyone hopefully understands what I'm talking about. But here is the kind of the main point I want to make, especially to, for those of you that have struggled with Algebra 1, okay? And even those of you that are strong math students in any math course, here is what you want to do. Where do you think it's easiest to get, um, you know, the best grades in, uh, on these math tests? Well, in your first quarter, okay? <laughs> your first quarter, this is typically going to be like review uh, topics, okay? This right here, you want to study super hard. Try to get as many A's right here as you possibly can. Okay, like max out these tests because as you go on to your second quarter, and second quarter is going to be a little bit easier, right? Like try to get as many A's. Of course, you want to try to get as many A's across the board. But here's the deal. When you get into your third and fourth quarter, you're going to have to know all this stuff. And if you struggle with it, these quarters here, you know, are going to be the most challenging, right? They're going to have the most advanced material and they're going to rely on all the other stuff that you learned. So in other words, when you go to school, when you start a class, you want to be aggressive and be like, okay, I'm going to really study super hard. And if you struggled with Algebra 1, you're going to be seeing your teacher. You know, you're not going to take in anything for chance. You're going to be just working super hard. And that's going to pay off in your first couple quarters. I've seen this over and over again with students where they were able to get like two A's or an A and a B in a first quarter. Then they really struggled, maybe got like a C a C minus on a, uh, the last, you know, part of the course, the second half of the course, but they were able to pass the, you know, class maybe with like a B minus. Okay. So if you're concerned about passing, this is a kind of a good strategy, which is like, Hey, just start working as hard as you possibly can, especially, you know, uh, you know, if you didn't do well in algebra one, see your teacher as much as possible and, you know, do work outside of the class. Okay. Now, if you need help with algebra one, you'll find the link uh, in that desc in the description below as well, as long with, uh, along with my algebra two course. But here's the thing, give yourself enough time to study. Okay. When, you know, your class actually starts, just get as, uh, you know, as immersed as possible and you will be successful in Algebra 2. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.